All right, so here we are going to make a green screen and a lightsaber with Josh here to make him look like he's kind of in the Star Wars universe here. So this is basically what the final product's going to look like. You can make some adjusts and tweaks and change up however you want, but we're going to walk through the basics how to do this. So what you need to do is you need to open up Adobe After Effects, and you're going to have something that looks kind of like this. I'm going to actually keep working on the one that I already currently have, but I'm going to keep working on this particular one because I have this stuff already imported and all the settings have rendered and stuff like that. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you import the footage, which is description below has the link to download the files for this. And it's just best practice to put a footage folder, put your footage into there, have a compositions folder, make your compositions there and your solids. So once you have your footage in here, all you have to do is you click and drag this down to the little composition button right here. And once again, just feel free to go ahead and click pause at any time and work this through yourself. I'm going to just keep going pretty much full speed. And if you need to stop it, do something, go ahead, just pause it and start back up when you need to. So now we have the composition here. Now this automatically comes up with a title, C200-1, because I already had 200. I'm going to move this in the composition folder here. So this is where we could do a couple different things, different ways. I'm going to start off doing green screen, but you don't have to start off doing the green screen. You can do that at the end. It really doesn't matter that much in this one, but it, it sometimes makes a little difference. Like when he's moving his stick through the air, the tracking might be a little bit more difficult to track it if you've already done the green screen because it's, it might start deleting some of this at the same time. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to go into effects and presets here. If you don't see that, already you need to go up into the window and do effects and presets. Then you will see this on the side here. And then we're going to go to Keen. And the one that I use, the one that I like, there's a lot of different options here, but the one that I really like doing is color range. So I just click and drag that onto the footage here. And then I use these little eyedroppers and select the green. Now it's going to start pulling out that green. Now I can hit the eyedropper with the plus button and I can start selecting more greens. And that's pretty good right there. And we can go ahead and adjust some of the fuzziness, some of the stuff like this. If you use the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can actually zoom in, hold space bar. It will come up with the hand and we can actually move around like that. Spacebar is also a play button, which I accidentally just hit right there. So we can see it's really not as clean as I really want it to be. So we're going to click the plus, go on top of that there. Those little fuzzes there. There. Now we got a pretty clean slate. There's not really much of anything around there, except for right around his hair. There's a little bit of issue. And that would look kind of weird having green edged hair. So we're going to go to the fuzziness here. Let's make it 50. Oh, that's a little bit too strong. So it starts eating away into there. Let's try 35 and see what it looks like. And this might vary a little bit per computer, depending on exactly what green you end up having. I'm going to go back to 25. It's a little bit more than I want. Let's try doing 30. Okay, so 30, it keeps him all there, all of him there. He's not eating him up, but is removing most of the green. But still, there is a little bit of green. So what do we do to fix that? Well, you go back over to the key options here. There's a few different things you, you could do. I find the easiest one to do, it's already designed just to do this, is advanced spill suppressor. I just drag that on top of there, and it takes anything that was green and that had a slight-ish green hint to it, and it'll make it gray. Now, right now, it's a little bit too strong. Turn it off here. You see it's actually starting to eat into his actual hair. So we're going to down this a little bit, the strength of it, so it's not quite so strong, but also doesn't start eating to all of his hair because he kind of, I'm assuming he wants the hair on top of his head. So that's how we do the green screen there. So I'm gonna put this back to full screen size here. But we also don't want all this stuff on the side here. That's not green screening. So the easiest thing to do is go up to the mask here. So we'll go to the rectangle and we'll just put it at the edge here. Click drag and go all the way out to the edge here. And there you go. You got yourself a mask now. Now you see this is mask here is a little bit off here. You can still see a little bit of that stuff there and a little bit of the stuff on the side here. So I click V in the keyboard. That'll get me back to my regular mouse. If I select on here and hold space, move down, I can actually see where the edges corners are. You just tap on one of those corners and drag it in. Now do it on the other one here. And now if I select off here, you can see it's all gone. Oh, there's a little bit up at the top here. 
So we're going to actually pull this one up here. We apparently didn't actually go all the way to the top on this here. So there you go. Now if we move this back to fit full up to 100% up to 100% here, we got ourselves a pretty gr good green slate. Pretty good green screen clean slate. So always save it. Early often is the big thing, especially with After Effects. It does have a tendency to eat up a lot of computer power and crash your computer. So save it often. So now we're going to create right click over here and we'll go to a spot that says new and create a new null object. Now for this particular project, you wouldn't have to do a null object. It's just good practice to do it this way. Once you start getting into more advanced stuff, this is the way you're going to want to do it. So we're going to show you how to do it now, just starting off with the best practice type of things. So I'm going to name this just by hitting enter on the keyboard after I select it, Saber Base. And the reason I'm calling it that is I go to my position, so you hit T, P, the letter P on the keyboard, or you can do the drop down here and go to your position here. And we are going to put a keyframe on it. But before we actually start messing around with this keyframe stuff here, we're going to actually find out where we want to start and stop this video because we had a lot of extra stuff at the beginning and end. I'm going to start it right about here. So what you need to do is just select the layer you want to cut and go control shift on the keyboard and then D. That will split it or cuts it. I don't really know why control shift D is that, uh, but that's what it is. So we get rid of that, click delete. We move over here until we find, well, we're probably at the end of what we really want to have. Da, 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 da. Let's go to right about there. Okay, so now select that again, Control Shift D, delete that right there. Now we have just the, the time area that we're going to work on, want to work on. That's about four and a half seconds, something like that, which will be plenty of time to learn how to do these basics. So now let's go back to this, go into position. Let's go to the beginning here. We're going to zoom in on the timeline here and the composition by hitting the plus next to the space or uh, backspace key not the plus that's by the number pad that will do something different moving over here we will set a keyframe here where the position this is going to be so we're going to move this no object so just select it oh so just select it and we're going to put it at the base here now i'm going to once again use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in hold space to get the hand and move down so i want to move I'm going to make sure I'm selecting the right thing here. Select the null object. Put that at the base here. I'm going to move over two frames. You can do it two frames if you want a little bit quick, but maybe not quite as precise of a lightsaber thing. So I'm going to do it two frames now. It's partially for time reasons. Move over two frames. And then the way you can actually move two frames is actually use the uh, page up and page down keys. That will move you over one frame back and forth the frame. So now we're going to move this over here. Make sure we just follow along the, the center of this rod at the base of this hand. So we're going to move over two more keyframe or two more frames. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way. Yes, there are things that you can do that will make it so auto track it. Uh, but because his hand actually within this video goes off screen here, uh, let's see where right up. Oh, that isn't quite where it is. Eventually, he goes off screen here. It can't track if it's off screen, so you're going to have to do manual stuff anyway. So, yeah, like right there, it's a little more difficult. He does the flip. The automatic tracking will not work with that. It just won't. Uh, so we're going to do this whole thing manually. And instead of sitting here watching me do the whole time going back and forth, we're going to jump into the future where I've already done this. So now I've already gone ahead and put in the, the keyframes here all the way through for this null layer. You see I have a few other things here. This is the one I've already done. But I also created one for the saber top. And I created this and I just followed the top. I followed the whole top of the... Oop. There we go. I followed along with the, the top here of the saber. Uh, went along the whole, whole way there. And the reason for that is now, if you don't already have the Saber effect, you want to go to videocopilot.net. This is the link here. It's an absolutely amazing place to learn more about After Effects. I highly, highly recommend it. He created this plugin, and he created it for free. It's for Windows and for Mac. 
If you don't already have this plugin, go ahead and download it and install it now. You will need to close out of After Effects before the install will actually take effect. So go ahead and close out of After Effects, download this, install it, and then you can jump back into this tutorial. All right, now that you have come back to After Effects, had this effect installed, you're going to want to create a new, so once again, right click, a new solid. It doesn't matter what color it is, it'll ask this. I'm going to just name this saber 2 because this is the second one i made because i already made one in this earlier click ok yes it is this giant white box that's taking over everything like ah, what am i going to do well now that you have installed your saber effect go to your video copilot effects here and saber is there click and drag that onto this white layer now you have this beam it looks like well this is your saber I know it's not doing anything right now. If you would play through it, it just sits there and it covers everything up as black. That's okay. You need to go over to render settings here in the composition settings, make it transparent. Now we can see through behind it. Yay, that's exactly what we want to do right now. So we're going to go to the saber effect that we just created here. I usually like having my null object on top, so I'm going to actually bring this down below just because it bothers me having it that way. So we're going to go to the... So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down this here so we can see the position here. We're also going to drop down this spot here and go down to our saber effect here. We want to go to the core start. So I'm going to hold Alt and click on the stopwatch. And this will... Make this into a, basically it's a programmable uh, keyframe now. So I can type in different stuff to make it do things. Or I can also take this pick whip here, that's what they call this, and drag it up to the position here. And then go ahead and click the enter by the number pad. And now wherever this node or the null object was, wherever that position is, you will see that this Saber's beginning spot will follow that line all the way along. Yes, we have it randomly stuck at the top of his head here. That is okay. We're going to switch that as well. That's why we need to also make not only a Saber base, but also a Saber top. So we go to the Saber end, do the same thing, Alt click on the stopwatch there, use the pick whip, bring it up to position, click the enter by the number pad, and now voila, it's following along. Josh now has this really cool lightsaber. And there is the one issue you probably notice is when making the keyframes that there's a spot where it just goes behind his hand there. What we'll do at the end is we are going to take the saber file and we're going to do control shift D, split it. We'll zoom in here and we'll actually delete one frame out of it here. So now it's two different layers. That way it disappears when it goes behind his hand and then it comes back there. So that's what we're going to do in the end. So don't worry about it. We're we're going to set all the settings for the saber first. That way you don't have to copy from one effect to the other and the layer and stuff like that. So we're going to make all the settings as we want it. And then we'll come back and do that tweak there. So if you look up here, presets, there's a bunch of different preset objects, options. We have the core, we have energizer. Th this is where you can start playing around with it and make it really your own. You don't have to do just what I'm doing. I'm going to do, uh, let's do energize. No, not energize. That's not the one I want. Uh, energy let's just go with energy for right now i can adjust the core color i'm going to keep it somewhat orangish uh, because well i'll make it slightly more red i don't want a pure red uh, i'm making it orangish because the lighting color we we're putting on his face looked kind of orangish but i'm leaning a little more towards the red because in the end i'm going to do some color grading stuff that's going to make it look a little bit more red because the image that I put in the background, which you can go and Google and grab any image you want for learning purposes, okay, just don't go and try selling your work with doing this. So this layer that I did, I already put it in here. You can just download one, drag it in, put it into your footage folder, kind of like what I did here. And I have the image here. So now I'm going to turn this on, this layer here. There we go. So now this is where he's sitting. It's pretty cool, I think. But he still doesn't look like he actually fits in this location. The reason is look at how the color and the contrast in that. Josh doesn't have the same contrast in his face and his body. So he looks like he was just randomly placed in front of a green screen and set inside of here. Which is obviously not what we want to look like in the end. So what we have to do then is actually come over here. 
easiest way to ty do is type in curves, do some color grading. Now this is something you can do directly in After Effects or you can do it in Premiere or some other softwares like that as well. I'm gonna do it straight in Premiere or do it straight in After Effects right now because that's where we're in. So I'm gonna click drag it over, put it onto my video file layer here. And I had one up here already. This is kind of what we're gonna go look for, but I'll recreate that for you here. So we have to increase the contrast because this is a rather flat image. So we make this basically into kind of an S shape. We bring down the shadows a little bit and then we bring up the highlights a little bit. Now he's already starting to look a little bit more like he's actually there. I'm gonna bring up the highlights just a little bit more because he's supposed to have this bright lightsaber right in front of him. His face should be glowing a little bit more than some of the stuff in the background. The shadows might be just a touch too dark. And this is where you can really start playing around with it. Depends on what background you put on him you're going to want to adjust this a little bit differently. So you might also have found an image that you put in the background, by the way, that wasn't full size. Like this one by default, this is the size of it. I actually went to the scale. So go down to your scale here by dropping down transform. And I just made it 200% just for now to make it bigger. So this would really work instead of having a random box like this behind him. He actually has a real world behind him. Let's go back into this layer here with the camera and let's start playing with some of the curves. I also adjusted the red. So by default, you're just adjusting the red, greens, and blues all at the same time. So basically it's adjusting the brightness factors. I'm gonna go into red and I'm going to play around with just the red. And I'm going to boost the red just a little bit to give him a little bit of red glow because there's a lot of red light in here. Give him a little bit of match to that and kind of also match the redness to the saber there. Kind of really pull it all in together I don't want quite as much red in the shadows, so I'm gonna drop that down in the shadows. It's just more where it's being lit up that it should be turning more red. So there we go, and that's the basics of the image. So now as he's swinging this around, remember we were shining the light in front of his face as he was swinging around so he'd get the glow looking like he had an actual saber. So when he moves the saber, we actually move the light to really make it look like the saber is actually on there. So when he puts it down, like right about there, he goes a little bit darker and then it comes back brighter there. So that's the basics of how you do a lightsaber and green screen effect. Thank you, Josh, for being the model for this and hope you all have fun.